Egg prices are out of control. They doubled over the course of 2022. So maybe that's got you thinking, should I get my own backyard chickens? Today on CityCast Las Vegas, co-host Vogue Robinson talks with Kim Foster, the award-winning food writer and notable neighborhood chicken wrangler, about the pros and cons of home-styled egg production in Las Vegas. Fair warning, if you've got kids in the car, there's a good stretch of frank conversation about chicken butts. Actually, they're going to love that. It's Monday, February 13th, 2023. I'm David Figler, and here's what Las Vegas is talking about. Oh, Kim Foster, welcome back to CityCast Las Vegas. How you doing? I'm doing great. So happy to be with you. Yes. Okay, Kim. Yeah. <laughs> These egg prices are soaring. <laughs> I had a three egg omelet this morning. I felt like a boss. It felt like a luxury item. I put my little green marinade across the top of it, and I was like, this is high living. <laughs> so December, <laughs> December prices of eggs, like, doubled over the course of 2022. So I feel like everybody and their mama is like, look, we're going to buy some chickens, and that's how we're going to save money on eggs. Do you think that's a good idea? It's like the worst idea ever. It's it's so bad that I feel like I feel sorry because I know somebody's done that. They've yes. decided they've gone to the farm store, they've bought in chicks, they have the hot light in their house, and they're feeding these chicks, and they're like, "We're gonna have eggs. It's we'll gonna be have eggs. We'll have them ourselves. They'll come from the earth." <laughs> they have yeah, exactly, and they have no idea what's in front of them. So. Right. Because you have 22 chickens here in the city. Yes, I do. And I have, I also have a turkey. Oh. Named Tom, and I have three guinea hens. Okay, so we have poultry. I have poultry. <laughs> yes. Yes. Just to the <laughs> I have poultry. Uh, why? I, I want the why and the how, actually. Why Why you got on them chickens? And, and okay, how so did you acquire them all? When I first started, my idea, because I'm a food writer, was that I would have this perfect bio habitat Mm -hmm. where I would have garden and the food and then the chickens would like, you know, it would like be the circle of life situation, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like the scraps would go to the chickens and then the chickens would lay the eggs and then there'd be garden. Like, you know, it would just be like a whole like bio habitat that would like feed each other. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I'm the worst gardener in the world. I could not grow anything. Oh, no. No, it's terrible. And I'm part of backyard gardening groups in Vegas and like I can't grow anything. So what was left was the chickens because I'm good with animals and, okay. and and apparently poultry. So I um so I kept the chickens and I kind of fell in love with them, Vogue. I fell in love with my chickens. I, I, I love things. I don't think I would ever go for twenty two though. So how did you get from one or two to yeah. twenty two? We started with four. And then I just couldn't produce enough eggs. And so I was like, if we're going to do it, we might as well just friggin' do it. You know, we might as well. On an average, I probably buy two dozen eggs a year. That's you, that's my like, wow. there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a time in the winter when everybody stops laying. Right. Hmm. And the then the light comes back. It's all about how much light there is during the day. Then I was the, curious about that. If, like, about if it's about the weather and the warmth and if they're too cold, they won't lay. Is that is that a thing? It's not the temp thing here. It's the light. In fact, in Las Vegas, all of our chickens started laying because I'm in the backyard chicken group, of course. (laughs) Is this a Facebook group? Facebook group. And they're amazing. They're amazing. And they know everything. And this is the thing about chickens. You you can't just go to the vet like you would your dog, right? Because Mm -hmm. maybe your vet knows, maybe they don't. There's a few farm vets or whatever. But you become the vet. So if you go in my fridge, I buy syringes and I give them antibiotics when they're sick. I like have to figure out what diseases they have. I have a little hospital inside my house to bring in a chicken that's not doing so well. So it isn't just like throw them out in the backyard and then they just produce eggs and you really don't have to do much. So you have to care much more complicated than that. They actually are sentient beings. (laughs) (laughs) 
Exactly. So what's the hardest thing about raising birds, your your poultry farm? <laughs> the hardest thing is just, okay, so it's expensive. I mean, I think this is the thing that people don't see when they go in. It's not expensive. It's not crazy expensive, but it's more expensive than just going to the store and buying eggs. So I buy feed. A 50 pound bag is like $23. Mm -hmm. You know, they go through it like crazy. Now my chickens eat all of my scraps. And so my eggs have a really high, I I suspect have a high degree of omega-3 because I give them fish and salmon skin oh. and, and uh, flax seeds. These and are bougie like chickens. Okay. These are bougie chickens. Yeah, they're bougie chickens. Exactly. But if you're going to do it, you might as well do that because the truth is that what makes the eggs special in a backyard farm is that they're pastured and mm-hmm. that they're eating bugs and greens and that it's completely, you know, this natural diet. That's what gives them the best thing, the best stuff, right? Mm-hmm. The, the nutrients, that beautiful blazing orange yolk. Um, the whites set up really nice when you're cooking them. They don't like they're fresh, right? Like basically you're cooking with eggs out of a chicken's butt, right? Like <laughs> it's still warm, right? So it's beautiful. Oh my God, I just got Vogue. I'm... Vogue, like the butt is just too much. I no, can't. no, you're fine. I have a butt question. So we don't, we don't yeah, be all right. Go ahead with your butt question. <laughs> so, we also read in the local news that like chickens, if their poop just kind of like blocks their butt, <laughs> then basically they might die if you don't, purposefully clean them. So is, is that actually a thing? Not chicken, not okay. chicken, chicks. So if you oh, get babies, the babies, okay. Yeah, the babies. The babies little butts get like little poop in them and you have to get in there and they dry, it dries up and then it oh stops God. the rest of the poop from coming out. So you have to get in there and like wipe get their butts all wet and then pull the poop out. Okay, so this is but like baby care. Okay. It's baby care. It's not the big chicks, they can do it themselves. They're fine. So mm-hmm. the big chickens are fine. But if you're going to do this, my point is they either should be pastured or you should be giving them bougie scraps. Because if you don't, then you might as well just buy them Hmm. with the added omega-3s for eight bucks. That will give you the same caliber of eggs that I'm producing here. They just won't be as fresh. Hmm. They won't be warm. They won't be warm out of the chicken's (laughs) butt. (laughs) I know you mentioned, obviously, you've got kind of your your chicken health shack set up at yes, home. Okay. Yes. Uh, but is there like a vet you can take the chickens to at all in town? There is. There's farm vets and stuff. But who wants to spend like $300, you know, fixing a chicken when you can go to the farm store, get, you know, ivermectin or, you know, and other kinds of antibiotics and things. And also, I don't need the vet because I can go to my chicken group and show them a picture and say, here's my symptoms. Right. This isn't laying anymore or this chicken is bleeding or not or hobbling around or whatever it is. What do I do? Somebody in that group has had a chicken with that issue. And they'll say, oh, go to the farm store, pick up this. You need to do that. And then you just go and you do that. You, so you become really good at those kinds of things. But if you're not willing to get that into it, it's probably not your thing. It's not worth just the eggs. So it, this is a way of life. <laughs> it's a way of life. <laughs> this, is, this is an entire way of life. Okay. It is. It is. And don't think that there's not moments where I think, do I really want to keep doing this? Do I really want to be this involved in my chickens? I could just go to Whole Foods and pick up the eggs. You know, mm-hmm. like I, I really do think that sometimes. I mean, it's a thing. I, I would feel the same way. I grew up on, um, my grandma had like an acre and a half of land. So like our home, like we had chickens, we had ducks, we had geese. Like a, a gander bit me on like my 10th birthday. <laughs> Aww. It's okay. I was taking his eggs. I am mad. Do you have to get a special permit to raise the birds in Vegas? No. Depending on where you are, um, like if you're in rural parts or parts in like northern, it doesn't really matter. But if you are uh, downtown where I am, uh, you have to keep it under 25. There was a change in the rooster laws. For a while, you couldn't have any roosters, but I think oh. now it changes because you know people want to breed birds and things like that so oh my gosh Next it's a thing level. for sure and 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 they will come and check like they have come out and checked 
Right, because so, you're flirting uh, with that that 22. You're flirting with close, 25. <laughs> close. Like, I'm really, really close. So <laughs> well, they, they come out. If they hear like any reports or anything, if your neighbors, they will come out and check. Do you ever get any noise complaints about your birds? Well, my chickens are pretty low key. I mean, they're they cluck and it sort of blends into the thing into the surroundings. But I have three guinea hens and they are uh, really loud and screechy. And so they can be if they see me walking across the backyard, <laughs> they'll just start screeching. Or if a, if like a dog comes into the backyard or they see a hawk, they're really good at warding off predators. And so they're sort of a little like watchdogs. It's next level. OK, so, I mean, you do have your eco your ecosystem dream is happening, though. It is happening. It's, just, it's an goats. urban ecosystem. <laughs> it's an urban ecosystem. If I had goats, I, I think I would be, but I can't have goats. But I, I, I would love to have goats and chickens. And but yeah, Don't then my that. ecosystem would be would be nice. But yes. uh, yeah. <laughs> so we had my my grandma's home had uh, we had chickens, we had pygmy goats, we had uh, and pygmy goats are fun. <laughs> They're called kids, uh, but like <laughs> getting the eggs from the chickens and the, the guineas and all that was part of like our chores sometimes. And like also You're picking a girl. I am. So for your kids, I mean, like, how do they feel about the chickens? Well, my daughter, my youngest daughter, I have four kids. My youngest daughter, Desi, who is seven, has a very special relationship mm. to the chickens. I think the other the other kids are sort of like, okay, whatever, mom's a freak. But um, <laughs> my youngest has a special chicken who she's kind of made as a, like made as a local celebrity here in Vegas. Her name is Cheese. And she was one of my first chickens. And she's this tiny little bantam. Oh. And so one of the things that Desi does with her friend is feed Cheese to Cheese. And they bring her <laughs> inside the house and they wrap her up and let her watch, make her watch TV. She was watching like Harry Potter or something like yes. that. And then they were feeding her Manchego cheese. And yeah. Bougie and chicken. Bougie, bougie. But they like cheese because she's really, really small. I love how Desi treats cheese. That's super sweet. <laughs> yeah, she's great. And she'll go out and get eggs for me. And she's a bit of a farm girl without the books. Yes. But yeah. So. <laughs> you got to get her books about animals. That's all. That's it. That's it. Exactly. Chicken Little. Chicken she Little loves, was a jam. She loves having them. She loves going out there and she'll sit in there and play with the chickens and stuff. And so that's really nice. So lovely does it matter what kind of breed of chicken that you have or is there one that's like the vegas survivor like is there a chicken it's like this chicken can survive harsh weather yeah if you go to some are better with cold some are better with heat and if you go to buy your chicks at the farm store or at a, like a reputable farm there's a bunch of farms like in perump and stuff mm -hmm. if you buy them from the farm store or perump they generally only sell breeds that do well in vegas now, how do your chickens handle the Las Vegas heat? Like, are birds able? I mean, clearly yours are still alive. <laughs> they are alive. Yeah. But how? Okay, so in the de bougie department, I purchased a swamp cooler yes. uh, for them. You have so to. You have to. A lot of the reason that I don't put extra light in the coop in the winter is to give them a break because the summers are just really hard on chickens and Searing. they really can not just die from the heat but they just get done They're, they just become more tired more vulnerable to things because the heat is so oppressive mm. so i set up the swamp cooler in there and they all jockey for position and then they do a little dust bath and then they snuggle into their like little spot in the dust bath and then they just let the swamp they just sit in front of the swamp cooler all day uh you know they got a nice, nice life. I want to dust bath and to <laughs> just lay on top of people that I like. You know, it hasn't been lost on me that, you know, there are people who don't have proper ventilation in the summer and that my chickens do. And I am uh, profoundly aware mm. of how stupid that is. And that it is very bougie and we were laughing about that, but I do recognize that I probably treat my chickens better than a lot of people are treated just in general. Mm. So it's probably good to remember that. Sorry, I didn't mean to get sad, but it's no. important to remember that. Yeah. I think 
I think what you're showing is a certain amount of, you know, humane care. I think the humans who you live with, you take good care of them and you have other animals and having any kind of animal out here in this city, if you're going to care for it, you're going to try to care for it as responsibly as possible. That's how people and animals should be treated. If we're going to care for them, then that's how we should care for them. The schools should have good AC in the summer and your chickens should have somewhere where they can dust bath and get some AC. Or some, right. some breeze. I am mad at you. Yes, um, it's just absolutely. funny. <laughs> yeah, and it's funny. I'm, there's just no doubt about it. And it also, there's this whole thing. So sometimes I'll give them, like, if we have, like, leftover spaghetti. It's one of my favorite things is um, I know no. that I can, yes, <laughs> Look what I you just did. I, can be, I can be super famous, Vogue, doing this. I know that I can have, like, millions and millions of followers on TikTok if I just did this. But I have not done it because I don't need another job. But I want to have um, a TikTok account that is just chickens eating spaghetti. That's it. Nothing else. Because it's the most hilarious thing ever. Because they like suck the noodles in just the way humans do. And it's really (laughs) hilarious. I feel like my nieces would watch that. Um, So, you know, you don't have to have a consistent account. Just post one video, see what happens. Right, exactly, exactly. And then you could have an only only chickens account. Eating spaghetti. So (laughs) it's that fun to watch. I'm not going to lie. I believe you. I I see the joy. (laughs) So what is your favorite thing about raising chickens in Vegas? I like the community of people who raise chickens. It's really nice to just have this little group of people who, you know, all love their chickens and we're a little kind of crazy about our chickens. And maybe other people like yourself are sort of thinking about who are these crazy people? But there's something nice about being crazy in a group. And the Las Vegas Backyard Chicken Group, and they call themselves the Backyard Pet Chicken Group for a reason. Uh It's not like a livestock site and they won't even allow you to talk about culling your roosters. I've culled some roosters, like, you know, killed them, Mm -hmm. but they don't even let you talk about it in this site because no, 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 no. We are here. We love our chickens. They're part of our family. Yeah. Yeah. We don't, they bring them in the house. There's pictures of like chickens sitting on a pillow and, you know, like I'm actually fairly like they're my backyard you know, these are for eggs. I have a line, right? But there are people who don't have a line. I mean, there's turkeys that are living inside in Vegas. Bro, no, (laughs) no. It is. (laughs) I mean, uh, I can't imagine, but we did have indoor potbelly pigs. So who who am I? (laughs) Who am I to judge the chicken people? All right, Kim Foster, let's do the thing we really came to do, which is to meet your chickens. And you take us outside and give us the tour. All right. I'm taking you outside right now, going through my backyard. Usually they won't be quiet. Oh, here they go. Okay, so I'm going out here. Here's cheese. So you see cheese? Okay. Where's cheese? There's cheese. Cheese always comes out because she thinks I have food. All right. So Tom came with four turkeys. We killed two for Thanksgiving two years ago. One died of natural causes and Tom is the only one left. And he's really beautiful. And he doesn't say much. He does gobble a little bit. I don't think he'll gobble for us. But just so you know, because I'm sitting here talking to you, his whole feathers are fanned out. Mm -hmm. He's trying to impress you. Because if you come by, he will, it's like, it's like, you know, swagger. It's like masculine swagger. Yes. He like immediately wants to show you all his beautiful feathers. Tom is huge. Well, Kim Foster, thank you for this tour in your life as a chicken farmer. <laughs> thank you. I so appreciate your, you know, your stories from your childhood. I, I'm kind of jealous and I love it. So Yeah, I'll come over. We'll hang out. We'll talk some more about uh, the joys of living on a small farm. I love that. I love it. Hey, a few tidbits from the news before you go. While the race to replace Mayor Carolyn Goodman is getting crowded, Councilwoman Victoria Seaman is the latest to announce a bid. You probably remember her from several recent controversies at City Hall, including a fight with another councilwoman. She's suing the city she wants to lead. 
Other candidates so far include Councilman Cedric Creer and former U.S. Congresswoman Shelley Berkeley. That list is going to keep growing. And tomorrow, the Ma Museum will mark its 11th anniversary with free admission for Nevada residents. Sure, it's time to the infamous St. Valentine's Day massacre, but that doesn't mean you and your sweetheart can enjoy and maybe even have a good debate about the odd bit of history where gangsters were the lovable antiheroes and maybe the cops were the antiheroes too. Well, anyway, there's a lot there to enjoy. And that's all for today here on CityCast Las Vegas. Do you have a friend who's thinking about getting chickens? Clearly, clearly you need to send them this episode. And if you both enjoyed the show, tell a friend. Seriously, word of mouth matters a lot. Then rate the show, leave us a review, and subscribe to our brilliant morning newsletter. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Talk soon. Ooh, I just sat in poop. So, no. sorry about that. <laughs> this part of being a farmer. <laughs>